Hello, this is Mike Wade, and welcome to this week's video featuring yours truly and Tom's tools. Stock and options trading has large potential rewards, but also large potential risks. And you must be aware of these risks and be willing to accept them in order to invest in the stock and options market. Don't trade money you can't afford to lose. Remember, I am not an investment advisor, so please don't construe anything I'm about to share with you as advice. All prices in U.S. dollars, unless noted otherwise, and please read the balance of the disclaimer at your leisure. Let's start with a phrase, sell expensive, buy cheap. In, I don't care what you're buying and selling, that's always a good idea, right? But in the world of options, it's also very a very good idea and actually quite critical. So in this video, I'm going to take you into a ranker that allows you to really understand the implied volatility of options and put yourself in a position where you can sell expensive options and buy cheap options using calendar spreads. This can be done with other strategies, but calendar spreads is a really good place to start. So let's talk about calendar spreads to set the table a bit. I like to call them the versatile calendar spread. All right, so why is it versatile? One, they're cheap. Two, they offer really great return on investment for the money. Pound for pound, there, you won't find many strategies that offer you low risk and high reward with low cost. They're constructed by selling a short-term option, typically at the money, and buying a long-term at the money option, typically. They produce a risk graph that looks just like this. And it's called a calendar spread because we're selling a short-term option, maybe in 30-day option and buying a 60-day option, for example. So what we're doing there is spreading time. We do that at the same strike price for most calendar spreads, the basic calendar spread. And it produces a risk graph that's sensitive to time decay, as you can see here. All right, so this is a basic risk graph. To the right of this line here is profit. To the left, risk. And as you can see here, we've got maybe $350, $400 of risk for a potential reward of darn near $1,500. So that's a really beautiful risk reward ratio. And we have different colored lines. We've got a red line, a blue line, a green line, and a black line. And what this depicts is as time moves from 42 to 28 to 14 to zero days, different colored lines, as we go from today to the next time frame, tick, talk, tick, all the way down potentially maximum profit shown right here at the tip of the witch's hat. So this is a risk graph that has a really wide uh, break even. So if the stock stays in this backyard, time happens, then you make money as the world goes around the sun. That's the idea of a calendar spread. But one of the things to note is that they're very sensitive to expense. Let's call it implied volatility. The implied volatility of the options has everything to do with the initial placement of the calendar spread as well as its ultimate success or not. So what we see here is the expense or implied volatility of the options. Just like a risk graph, we have four different time frames. Options that expire in 30 days is red. 30 to 60 blue, 60 to 90 green, and greater than 90 black. Here's an example. Again, we're selling this, the 30-day options and buying the 60-day options, typically on the basic calendar spread. So we're selling expensive options and buying cheap options. This is called implied volatility skew. You're getting the best of both worlds. You're buying options that are cheap compared to the options that you're selling. That puts you in a good position normally. So the thing we want to look for is how do we get smart about what we're buying and what we're selling and we're going to be able to do that with this brand new ranker just came out called the IV percentile ranker. In this video I'm going to show you how to use the ranker to find the very best IV SKUs to look for cheap options and the options that we're buying to look for expensive options for those that we're selling I'll take the results of that and pass them into the calendar spread ranker just for a quick overview of how to take the results and, and begin to do some analysis with particular spreads. And then I'm going to also share with you some basic at the money calendar spread tips. So that's what we're up to. Let's get into the software. You go into options, rankers, IV percentiles. As with all our rankers, there's a help file. I recommend that you go into the help file. And over here, we can look for high or low implied volatility 
in five different time frames. All right, so that's the value. So for example, if I'm buying a 30 to 60 day option and I want to make sure that that option is cheap, its IV is low in its annual range, then what I would do is click low IV and 30 to 60 day options. If I was looking for the most expensive short term options, then I can click high IV and 7 to 30 day options. So for this video example, I'm going to be looking for cheap options in the 30 to 60 day time frame. Why? Those are the options that I intend to buy. All right, that's simple. Play around with it. There's a lot of flexibility in this scanner. I'm going to scan against the S&P 500. You could also scan against cheap IV stocks if you wish. It's always a good idea to have cheap buy, uh, use cheap options. I'm going to hit my search button and this is going to go off and do the work for me and give me a result set that shows the actual expense on, on each of these different time frames ranking the 30 options by those that have the lowest implied volatility. That is powerful indeed. Notice here that we have this, the same information you've seen, the stock, the symbol, the chart, picture news, closing price, and this is where it gets good. We've got the percentile for each of the different time frames as well as the current value. So for example, on Celgene, the IV percentile for the 7 to 30 day is right around 15%. Its actual implied volatility is 26. All right, the, the, the options that I'm considering buying are the 30 to 60 day options. And you can see here that this option uh, on Celgene, the 30 to 60 day at the money option has an IV percentile of 4.68, which means that it's, it's really in the low part of its range. These options are really cheap. Those are good ones to buy. You can also see the imp actual implied volatility of the option that I would intend to buy. And you can see there there's 24.43, which is less than 26.05. So I'm, I'm buying options that are in the lower percentile and selling options that are higher in terms of both the percentile as well as the actual value. All right. And you can look, look through the balance of this at your leisure, of course. So, so that's the idea. What I want to do here is I'm going to save the top 50 of these into a list called My Stock List. And um, I want to take those stocks, the 50 best, cheapest, most cheapest, <laughs> most is cheapest, the cheapest, IV, 30-day IV options that are available. I can pop them into My Stock List, and then I might choose to go over to, to Searchers, single strategy, and then pull up calendar spreads. And that will leave you a screen that looks remarkably like this. I told you calendar spreads were versatile. You can see here there's many, many different ways to trade them. But I'm interested in the basic at the money put calendar back to back. These are the basics. You can get into so many other ones here. And I recommend that you take a class or really dig into calendar spreads if you want to go outside of the basics. I'm going to take that same list that has the cheapest 30 to 60 day options and I'm going to hit my search button. So let's see what's come back here and, and you can see here there's really quite a few quite beautiful calendar spreads. A list has a potential return on investment of 1224 percent. That's nuts. Really amazing. We've got our open interest. We've got the legs. We've got the, the stock price, the strike price. Uh, ideally, what you want to see is that the strike price be very close to the stock price. Red Hat is in this case. There are issues with the open interest. I wouldn't take this one because of the 14. We need, a, we need open interest to be a, 100 on all options or higher that we decide to trade. You've got your SKU. The, uh, the uh, short-term options are 19% more expensive than the longer-term options. So really nice information here on the calendars. If I wanted to look at Red Hat, I could go ahead and click on either of the leg prices. And then what comes back is a calendar spread that looks remarkably like that. It's, uh, it's, uh, it needs to be zoomed in a bit, but you can still see that we have these break-evens here. And um, almost three months of stock activity has been contained within these break-evens in 38 days, if it continues to do that, then I'm going to be looking at 
some, some really potentially some nice profit. Again, it's a $13 trade. Size it up to whatever you want. And you're looking at a really, really high probability trade. So that's a basic calendar spread. There's a lot more to say on calendars, and I'll do that in another video. But let's get into some calendar spread tips. These are some basics. Watch out for the earnings announcements because an er after an earnings announcement, the stock may gap. We don't like that with calendar spreads. We want the stock to stay where it is. So that's not good. Secondly, implied volatility tends to crush and drop, and that can also negatively impact your calendar spread. As you're beginning calendars, just use back-to-back at-the-money put options, as I demonstrated. Get out, as I said before, the earnings announcement. And for those stocks that have big IV rushes into earnings, and these are the gapping stocks typically, consider getting out 30 days before earnings because IV rush in the short-term option is not a good thing for a calendar spread. So those are some basics. If you want to get into calendar spreads, I'd recommend that you really get in and study and back test them and play with them. But that's the deal. Let's take a look at a quick review of how you use the IV percentile ranker. First off, leave the settings the same. Select S&P 500 optionable. In this video, I went after low 30 to 60 day options. There's a lot of flexibility. Play around with it. And then I hit my search button. And uh, once I got the results, I took the top 50 of those results and I put them into my stock list by clicking replace. All right, that's the IV percentile ranker. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next week.